Hello and welcome to the Duluth News Tribune's Bulldog Insider Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Wellens, the Bulldogs hockey beat reporter at the News Tribune. And I'm Zach Schneider, the television voice of UMD Hockey and My9 Sports. Our guest this week on the podcast is a freshman goaltender for the Bulldogs men's hockey team. Oh, I should ask this before we started to get make sure I let me know if I totally butcher your hometown here. Polprad, Slovakia? Yeah, that's right. I got it. There yeah. we go. Welcome to the podcast, Adam Guyon. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you. That might be the first time I, I nailed. That's uh, a pretty hard one, too. I, I mean, I sort of looked it up a little bit uh, beforehand, but... It's even, not that hard. Even, it's not bad. For him, it's, it's not, hard. Yeah. It's in that German kind yeah. of area. He, he's butchered easier. Yeah. yeah, I butchered easier. You're right. As long as it's not French. God help me with anything French. Adam, growing up in Slovakia, tell us, uh, what was life like there? What What was the hockey scene like over there? I mean, it's very different than here, obviously, like... You know, like when you are a kid growing up in USA, you're probably dreaming about playing college hockey. And for me, like I, I didn't even know about college hockey, you know, a few years ago. So so it was very different and just kind of obviously NHL is, is goal for everyone, wherever you are born. But, you know, like you are just watching players from from your country and uh, it was just very different, like not as not as big as here, I would say. So it was different than probably for most of the guys over here. Tell us about your your hometown of, of Poprad. Um, it's in the. I, I totally looked this up online. Do not have Slovakia geography memorized. Um, northern part of the country uh, near Poland. The photos online, from what I saw, make it look beautiful there in the mountains. Yeah, it's probably like the nicest area where you can travel when you come to Slovakia. So there's a lot of tourists in summer, and there is like the like the nicest mountains in the middle of Europe, like a few minutes from my home. So. It's, it's very beautiful there, and uh, yeah, it's a small town. It's like 50,000 people living there, so it's nothing big, but it's good size for Slovakia. So you come into Duluth here and other tours. Our tourism room's a little different. We have a big, giant lake. It, what, is it a big skiing town then and, and such in the mountains there? Oh, uh, yeah, a lot of people ski, and I was when I was younger, but I don't know when it's the last time since I ski, maybe more than five years ago because of hockey, obviously. But mm-hmm. yeah, there is a lot of skiing going on, and... Yeah, like I said, in summer, there is a lot of tourists just to go hiking and stuff. And in the winter, like a lot of people who just go to ski. So is hockey the big sport that kids play? Are there a lot of outdoor rinks uh, around the ho- around Slovakia? Yeah, I feel like hockey is probably number one with soccer. And now after a special, like we had a lot of draft success, you know, like we had first overall pick and, and a lot of guys drafted. I feel like that hockey is probably for sure number one now in Slovakia. So did you play soccer too when you were younger? Oh, uh, like... I, there is a lot of kids, you know, like playing more sports and then this side, like for me, it was always goalie. I wanted to be hockey goalie since I was two years old. So like, I wasn't even thinking about playing something else, but like just with friends, you know, like obviously we play a lot of soccer, maybe like guys here play baseball or, or football, you know, like we always went out and play soccer most of the time. So yeah. were you a goalie in soccer when you played? No, never. <laughs> just in hockey, not, okay. not any other sport, I was a so. goalie in soccer, uh, much lower level than, than you're oh. playing hockey, but the, the <laughs> movements are so different. I think I would be scared <laughs> of being goalie in soccer. I don't know. We don't have any equipment there. See, I would be scared goalie. to be a hockey goalie. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot less net to cover in hockey. Yeah. Soccer, there's way more. Um, yeah. Hockey, you actually have a shot at stopping the puck in a shootout, whereas <laughs> yeah. in soccer, yeah. you're basically hoping they miss. Yeah, you right? just be lucky. Better just to be lucky than good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's the life of a soccer goalie. Yeah. Who, did you watch – so you, you mentioned Slovakia just had an awesome NHL draft. Um, there's a lot of really good young players, you among them, coming up from Slovakia right now. But like growing up, how much NHL uh, were you able to watch and, and follow over I, there? I would say when I was like kid, let's say like 10 years old, like I wasn't really watching NHL. It was more like my hometown team. And even if you asked me 10 years ago who was my favorite goalie, I wouldn't tell you, you know, like Vasilevsky or someone. It would be more goalies from Slovakia and especially from my hometown, you know. But then obviously getting older, it was more and more NHL and now I like I watch some highlights, you know, of my hometown, but it's like 99% just NHL and nothing else. So mm-hmm. it changed. But like I said, when I was younger, it was a lot more just, you know, like my hometown and the Slovak League and national team and goalies from Slovakia. So how much pride is there? You said a couple of things. So we had the number one overall pick, meaning Slovakian, a Slovakian player was, was the number one overall pick. I mean, in the, in the, United States, we would never say we had the number one pick. Yeah. How much pride is there as you're growing up in like Olympics and World Juniors and, and focus on the country compared yeah. to like what you see in America now? 
I mean, that's just so different. I feel I feel like people from USA can't even imagine like how it is. Like, you know, like I would say like last two years we had like 14 drafted players or something like that. And maybe in like five years before that, like five years together, we had like few guys drafted. So there are years where we have, you know, like last year we had one guy drafted. So it's not usual that we have a lot of draft picks and then in one year we have first and second overall, like you have no idea what was happening in Slovakia and like people know me in Slovakia, but for you, I like, you know, Slavkovsky, like he can't even go out because everyone knows him, you know, and it's kind of like small country, like, like, you know, when you have a great player in USA, like there's just so many people who don't even know who he is. Like you, I can't go out without someone not knowing him, you know, so it's just, just so different. And like, like you mentioned, like playing for other country, like that's something huge, you know, like for me, like just watching World Juniors growing up, like, you know, like it was something huge, you know, and like most of those tournaments are in Canada or USA. So I always woke up at like, you know, 2 a.m. to watch those games. And it was like crazy, you know, like just cheering for your country and something bigger than, you know, when you are from USA is like, you know, like most of the people don't even know what World Juniors is. Like, for example, my Bielas, they never heard of it before. In Slovakia, like there is, everyone knows what it is. Like it's always in TV and everywhere, you know, so... It's just a lot more bigger in Slovakia because we are such a small country and we didn't have much success like the years before that, you know, and we, we always, you know, like playing Canada, they won like 10 nothing, you know, so it wasn't much fun. And then last year we had a lot of good players that we was able to, you know, like the year I was there, we took Canada to the overtime, you know, so it was a lot more exciting for the fans and it's just very different in Slovakia. You had mentioned you didn't know about college hockey till a couple of years ago. Take us through your your decision to, to leave Slovakia and, and come here to, to the United States to play juniors uh, in, in Chippewa Falls and, and Green Bay and, and now being here at UMD. Yeah, so for me, like, like, obviously my goal was to make it to the NHL one day, but like I wasn't any prospect or anything. I never really got chance in national team. And, you know, when you look at that, we have no goalies in the NHL from Slovakia right now. And when you have guy who, you know, there are, let's say, like six goalies who plays for national team, like every age, and I wasn't one of those six guys, like, what are the chances of me making it? Probably, you know, lower than zero, you know, so like no chance. But I always believe that, you know, like I could prove that I'm better than most of the people thought. And uh, I wasn't sure about college hockey because obviously, you know, like school and everything with that. But, you know, so I was thinking about major juniors as well. But especially being a goalie, I know you need more time to develop. And I was never thinking I'll be drafted. Like my, you know, like what I was looking at was probably the biggest guy was Sergei Bobrovsky, you know, like guy who is one of the best goalies in the NHL was never drafted. So I was like, if he can be pretty much the best goalie in, in the NHL without being drafted, I can make it there too without being drafted. So I was never looking on being drafted. Like my goal was, you know, to go to juniors play two, maybe three years go to some school, not like Duluth, like some school where, you know, maybe like not the best hockey school, but where I can play a games and develop and prove those people in four years, then that one day I can make it to the NHL. And then I came to Chippewa and everything changed after a few games, you know, so it was a lot faster than I thought, but that was always my goal. And I just felt like the college hockey is the best path for me to go to, to develop and get to the NHL one day. What do you think allowed you to just, it was quick, like it was, it was amazing. Yeah. You get to Chippewa Falls. I think it was the fall already. I'm, I'm hearing about this goalie in Chippewa, Slovakian goalie from Chippewa Fall, you know, who's playing in Chippewa Falls that everyone's jumping on. And, and I, I had heard UMD was interested and, and such. What, what do you think it was those, those first few months playing in the, the North American League with, uh, there that, that allowed you to burst onto the scene? You get a college scholarship offer and even the Slovakian junior national team ends up calling you up and you're, you're in the world juniors. Yeah, I mean... I just felt like how how guys were treating me there and starting with coach and like I said, all the returning guys, like it was something great, you know, like I wasn't expecting anything. And from from the first day they were treating me like if I was, you know, the best goal in the world, you know, which I didn't expect. And I mean, I was just playing, playing well, but I didn't feel like, you know, obviously you can improve like from nothing, you know, like I thought like I was better than most of the people thought. And in Slovakia, obviously, when you are not playing in national team, like no one will see you because who will be watching juniors in Slovakia, you know, like it's not like here, you know, like when I came to know, like there is like more than 100 guys for trying to make the team in Slovakia, the junior team where I played, 
it was good for me because I had 50 shots every game, but <laughs> like you buy a skate, you play basically, you know? So it's just very different how it works here. And uh, I just felt like everything worked out for me. And yeah, like I said, I thought I only need a few years to, you know, like come into some school and I played two games at a showcase and talked to 20 schools. So I kind of <laughs> didn't know what was going on. And yeah, like everything just happened so fast. How'd you end up in Chippewa Falls? What, did you have multiple junior teams like inquiring about you? How'd you end up? there so like i said i kind of knew that i want to go to college and knew that i you know have to play juniors in usa before that but for me there was zero chance to go to usa job because no one even knew that you know I no one knew who hockey. you were yeah so i had some I, I always had gopro behind the net even until last year you know and i always made some highlight videos and sent them to jan lashak he's director of gold in slovakia and he helped me the most in everything and even get to the USA without him, I wouldn't be here. And uh, he sent him, he sent those videos to, to one guy who is from Slovakia, but is living in USA for a long time. And uh, they got to Chipua and that's how, that's how I got there. But like, I had no options. Like Chipua was my only option, you know, before the season. And then after two games, like pretty much every USA team called my coach that they want me. So it was kind of crazy, crazy mom for a few weeks. So, yeah. And you said at one point you talked to 20 college teams thereabouts? Yeah, it was like in, like right after showcase, like after every game I talked to like six teams. There was four games, I played two of those four and after every game my team were just waiting for me in an hour on a bus, you know, like you just dress and go back, you know, like the showcase is in Blaine's so like hour and a half from Chippewa, I think, so you're just driving back and forth and like I said, after every game, I talked to like, you know, like six, six college coaches and whole team was just waiting for me on a bus for like hours to talk to them. So, so what was it about UMD that stood out um, among the, all the colleges that you talked uh, to? I always said it like, if I should just decide by myself, I would be still thinking <laughs> because like, I, I didn't have any dream school or like, I didn't know, like when I talked to Adam Kraus first time, I just saw Bulldog, Bulldog logo. I had no idea what it is, you know, like just so different than every guy here. So for me, it was just like, obviously I love my visit here, but I went to all five official visits I could have went to and I love all of the visits, you know? So it was just like the culture and like, you can see the goalies, you know, and obviously like how, you know, our goalie coach brand was working with goalies and even goalies who weren't drafted and signed, you know, after playing here. And I guess just, talking to my teammates, agent, coaches, like they all allow UMD and thought it would be a great option for me. So I went with UMD and yeah, it was a great decision. And again, at that time, you're not thinking NHL draft or anything like that. You're looking for a school yeah. that is going to allow you to, to develop and, and hopefully get a pro contract yeah. afterwards. I mean, like after those two games in Null, uh -huh. I already started thinking about drafts because like I played like three games in Null and already talked to an NHL team. Mm -hmm. Which okay. like for me, like I was eligible the year before and I say if the hundred goalies are drafted, I wouldn't be one of those hundred goalies. Mm -hmm. And then I play a few games in a null and NHL team start talking to me. So I didn't expect that. But after those few games, I was like, oh, I guess there is a chance. And then it was just getting bigger and, you know, higher, higher. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I feel like when most people around the globe picture the United States, um, very little about Wisconsin and probably specifically Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin <laughs> comes to mind. Give me your first impressions of, of Wisconsin and Chippewa Falls and how that compared to like what you had pictured the United States being growing up. Well, I've been to United States a few times before, okay. but it was like, you know, like Las Vegas, LA, Florida, Chicago. So it was something very different, you know. Obviously. Very similar to Wisconsin, very, Yeah, right? Vegas, Wisconsin, yeah. Yeah. same thing, same amount <laughs> yeah. of alcohol flowing. <laughs> yeah, so obviously those are very different, but like, I don't really care like where I am, you know, like playing in Chippewa or Green Bay or now here in Duluth, like I'm just focused for hockey, you know, that like some guys were in Chippewa, like, oh, there is nothing to do, you know? <laughs> And like, I didn't really care because like, I just go to the ring, go home, like do all the stuff I have to do to get better in hockey. So I wasn't like, oh, like there is nothing to do in Chippewa. Like I loved it there, you know, and I was close to the ring. Like, you know, I had great build. So I was like, I don't mind if I'm, if I'm in Chippewa or Chicago, mm -hmm. you know, like for me, it's pretty much not the same thing, but it doesn't really matter because I'm here to play hockey and, you know, eyes is always the same. So I, that's how I was looking at it. You mentioned you play a couple games in, in the Null Showcase there in, in, in Blaine, and 
you had NHL teams, college teams, but you mentioned USHL teams were, were also talking to you. You eventually went to the Gamblers just for what, 10 games and then went back to Chippewa Falls. Why stay in, in, in Chippewa Falls for, for the entire season and not make the the jump to, to the USHL? Because that's what a lot of players would do. They jump at the chance to go from the, the North American League to, to the USHL. Why did you wait before until going to Green Bay um, till last year? Well, as I said, before the season, I had zero options. That My only option was Chippewa. And I just had such a great relationship with Coach and was thankful to him, you know, in Chippewa that I didn't feel like leaving, you know, the team and him is the right option. So I went to Green Bay and also they could protect me for next year and then came back to Chippewa because that's what I feel like is right to do. And like I said, I loved it there. And uh, without Coach Casey giving me a chance, like, you know, I, I would be probably still in Slovakia, you know, and I don't know if I would be playing hockey because playing hockey in Slovakia is obviously <laughs> not great, you know. So, so like I said, I was just so thankful for him that, like, I didn't feel like I want to leave, you know. Is that – so – from my understanding, you could have come to, after that year in Chippewa Falls, could you have come to, to UMD right away? Yeah. But you decided to go to, to Green Bay. I'm assuming it's not just because you're, I'm assuming it's not because you're a Green Bay Packer fan or, or some, no. something like uh, like that. Why still go to Green Bay and, and wait to, to go to college? Um, you get drafted and everything. It, your patience with this whole process has seemed to, has always stu- stood out to me because we don't always see that with players. Yeah. So again, the bigger reason was that that's what my promise to Green Bay, you know, like, yeah, I'm here for those 10 games, so you protect my rights for the next year. So that was the big reason for it that, you know, like that was just the plan, you know, and I didn't feel like I want to change it, even though and when Coach Sandlin called me, like, it's hard to say no, but like he, he kind of like wasn't pressuring me or anything, you know, like even with, you know, like probably he give like when he talked to some guys, he tell them like, you know, like, let me know if you want to commit here in two weeks, like. I made him wait for a few months, you know, I come in December. So <laughs> he was never pressuring me. He was always great to me. And even with that decision, he he just gave me the option because I obviously had had a really, really good year. So he told me like, well, if you want to come, like, you know, like we want you, but if not, like take your time, like it's up to you, you know? So I just felt like in that moment that that was the right thing to do. And like I said, in format development, like playing a lot of games, games I felt like would, would help me. And, uh, Another big thing was, like I said, I, that I basically told Green Bay that I'll be there for the year. So what I'm hearing is that you're a loyal guy, and so that's four seasons in Duluth, right? That's what you signed up for, right? I didn't say that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's year two, three, or four. Like I don't know. I'm I'm just looking at this year, and uh, obviously the results are not the best right now. But I feel like the second half like will be a lot better. I can feel improvements and. Uh, I'm just looking at this year and we'll see what happens after. Yeah, so I'm just yeah. I'm just teasing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was I am curious though, what was a bigger thrill for you? The seeing your name get called in the NHL draft by Chicago or getting the call about World Juniors and getting to go represent your country? Well, I don't know if you have time for me to say the World <laughs> Junior story because it's crazy how it happened. I would love we've, to hear we've the World Juniors story. Yeah, we've got go, time. go ahead. Sorry, Wyatt. We're gonna go on this one. Like, cause that was <laughs> crazy. Just yeah. from my perspective of all of a sudden someone texting me and saying, Guyon's on the Slovakian team. You left him off. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's not listed on the Slovakian roster. It was roster. super late, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, obviously, like, I'm I'm playing. No, I'm I'm doing good. But, like, there wasn't, like, any chance for me to go to World Juniors. Like I said, there is, you know, like, always around six goalies in every every birdie or full Arcanian national team. And, and I was around there but never really got a chance to – to play any game, you know, like I played two games against Hungary in national team, which, you know, I can't really count as, as the real games, you know? Mm-hmm. So like I said, never really got a chance and, you know, like my season was going great, but still was just playing null. And uh, then I went to the Green Bay and I played two games before the the World Juniors before the Christmas break. And the first game I got a win, second game I got a shout out. And by that time, like Slack, I already posted roster with four goalies, you know, not just three, but four, even if, you know, like one extra if something happened. And then I just opened my phone after a game. I got text from the goalie coach, like, hey, like, call me when you will have time. Like, I'm looking, you know, like maybe to get you here. So I didn't know what's what's happening, but we had a skate with fans after a game. So he was already sleeping. I called him the next morning. We just talk about it. And he was like, well, like, don't tell anything anyone. We are just, you know, like looking at that option too, you know? So, 
So then I drove to Chippewa because that was my plan to stay with my billets in Chippewa over the Christmas break. And, you know, like on the way there, I was talking with, uh, on the way there, I was on the phone with the director of Golting in Slovakia. So he kind of told me a little more, you know, that like he still was kind of, he is the one who always trusted me the most. Like I said, without him, I wouldn't even be in the USA. So he was kind of putting that option there, you know, that I just keep looking at me. And I came to Chippewa, you know, it was night, Sunday night, I think. And the uh, manager was texting me. He was like, you probably already talked to Goli coach. Like, can you send me your passport? I did. And he was like, like, we'll stay in touch. It's like, you know, like whole team is already there. It's after the first pre-tournament game, like the first game against Finland is in like a week. And he tells me like, stay in touch. I was like, well, like, am I going or no? Or what are we doing? In 20 minutes, he was like, can you fly tomorrow? <laughs> so yeah, I, I can fly from <laughs> fly out of Chippewa Falls real, real, e real easy here. Yeah, so I so I flew the next day, and uh, another hard thing was that my best friend, who is playing in BC right now, they sent him home. You know, oh. so that was kind of weird that you know I got to the hotel at like two a.m. and he was leaving the next morning at six a.m. So we just met at the door, just say hi to each other, and uh, and yeah, so that was kind of tough. But we are still the best friends, you know. And he he wasn't like mad about it. He he knew it was kind of weird, but that's just how it happened. And uh, yeah, you know, like me coming there and then, you know, like changing the roster, like it's probably not normal. I don't know if it ever happened. So I thought no. it, yeah, <laughs> probably not. So I thought that like, you know, I'm going there to the day will give me chance, you know, we have two more pre-tournaments game and I didn't play at all. And then before the first game against Finland, goalie coach talked to us and he pretty much told me that if nothing happens, I'll be just third goalie for tournament, you know? So I was kind of like, I still believe that I went there for a reason, you know, that something, you know, like that I'll just get to the net somehow, you know? And then the first game with Finland just didn't go well, you know, like first goalie got pulled and, you know, like Marino, who was playing in Quinnipiac, went in and he had a great game, just one bad goal. So then no one told us what, what's happening the next day and we play USA and then in the morning just goalie coach told me before the morning skate that I decided that I'm going in and you know like I was playing no two weeks ago and then I'm playing guys like you know Logan Cooley, Hughes <laughs> and other guys and we won that game. Then the next game I had shot out and it just kept going from there so yeah it was crazy you know from <laughs> playing no and then playing at the role juniors against better than other guys like it was just crazy. Yeah, one time uh, UMD fans were okay with with the USA losing. But yeah, it was a surprise. It was a surprise. Uh, yeah, to, to all of a sudden, yeah, see you <laughs> added on the roster, and it's like, okay, well, he's probably just as a spare goalie or something. It must have been an injury or yeah. or something. And then, yeah, you're you're in there against the the United States. That's crazy. We're gonna take a short break. We'll we'll take a break right there. When we come back, we're gonna have more with Adam Guy on. You're listening to the Bulldog Insider Podcast. Hi, I'm Maria Lockwood, a reporter with the Superior Telegram. Explore Superior and Douglas County history with me on Archive Dive, a monthly podcast available at superiortelegram.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. Welcome back to the Bulldog Insider Podcast. I'm Matt Wellens, along with my co-host, Zach Schneider, and our guest, Adam Guyon. I'm going to go to a couple of listener questions from social media to kick off the second half, but the first one's actually mine. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, so you're not going to go to questions from the listeners. Well, I'm going to go to the questions from the listeners okay. after I get my one stupid one in, okay. in here. Um, I know there's a lot of stupid questions I ask on this podcast, but this one's extra uh, stupid. And this is the last Wisconsin question I ask. Um, for listeners that don't know, I'm a Wisconsin native who grew up around Green Bay. So, so we had your former gamblers, current Bulldogs teammate, Jason Shagabe on the podcast recently. And he said he never took a tour of Lambeau Field last year when he played for the gamblers. Did you get a tour of Lambeau Field? Did you take advantage of that at all? Go on over there or no? Not a tour, but I've been to one game. You bet. Okay, so yeah. you've been to a game. Yeah. So that yeah, Shagabe hadn't even done that, yeah. and maybe yeah. it's the Minnesota in him, and the probably a Vikings fan. Do you like? Did you like football before coming to America? Never watched it in my life, <laughs> and I I still probably haven't watched like the whole game. Like when when the guys are watching, like I watched with them for a while, <laughs> but it's not something that I would watch the whole game. You know, like I, I know the rules and everything, like what's going on, but it's like just you know, like so many breaks and just time going there talking <laughs> and just weird, you know. But like the game was great experience, like. Like more, I would say like the before the game, like national anthem, and there was like it was some special game. So the Jets flew, you know, like about the the field mm -hmm. before the game. So that was cool. And then, like the game, obviously was cool to see it and so many people. 
but like it wasn't like some like crazy experience, you know. So mm -hmm. I would say like the like the pre-game, you know, and like national anthem and all of that was a bigger experience than the actual game for me. Did you go in the fall or in the winter? It wasn't that cold. It I think okay. it was like very early November or something. Okay, but it wasn't it like was, it was snowy, still cold, cold, but it wasn't like snowing. Yet. Okay, so I've been to one game. It was a fall game, and I think still on my bucket list is like a winter snowy cold Why? game, I, just for the experience. <laughs> oh, I, you're not, I don't know. You're not. You're not coming away. Someone, it's not on my bucket. Okay. Yeah, as someone that's done cold games at Lambo many times, including the um, 2007 NFC Championship game. Cold is not. Yeah, I want to do. I want to do one. Yeah, I think. Yeah, when I was, I was. Yeah, I was. I was fresh out of college. My yeah. dad and I, we did our one. His, my grandpa had been at the Ice Bowl, so my dad was like, "I can do a below zero game at Lambo," and I'm like, "I can do it." We did it once, and I have no ambition to to right. do it again. But happy you did the one. Happy I did. Uh, I don't know. Brett yeah. Favre completely bombed in that game. That's true. But this isn't a Packer podcast. Did the Packers win the game that you went to? Oh, Do you remember? I don't remember, but you actually left after half. Oh, you left after half. It was it was really boring game, <laughs> so like there wasn't any touchdown or anything, and it was getting really, really cold. And I think it started raining. I don't think snowing. Okay. okay. And like like I said, my people has season tickets, so it's not like they came there to see one game. So they're like, "You want to leave?" And I was like, "I don't really care. We can." <laughs> so we just left after halftime. So yeah. Sounds like an uncle I had who had yeah. season tickets as as well. He'd always leave after the third quarter to beat the traffic. But <laughs> so that's a good one. That's a good uh, box to check on. You came to America. You went to Lambeau Field. You saw yeah. a Packer game. Yeah. That's a good one. Does that compare to anything? Can you compare? that to anything like in, in Europe, sporting event in, in Europe that you've been to? Obviously, soccer is the biggest thing in Europe, and I've been to some like bigger games like in Germany. And like my family went to like Sierra Real Madrid, you know, like probably the biggest club, but I was at some hockey tournament, so I didn't <laughs> so I haven't been there. But we've been to Barcelona, I didn't see the game, just the tour of the of the no camp. And yeah, like I've been to some games, but like nothing like huge, you know, but that's like Maybe that's more on my bucket list than go to Lambeau Field in winter, you know, sure. to go to see like Champions League or something like that. So I think it would be higher on my list too. Yeah. Yeah. That would yeah, be awesome. Yeah, I haven't yeah, been to a yeah. game in Europe. All right. Actual listener questions now. <laughs> it's amazing, Zach. You make fun of me for saying this is me being lazy. And then. Well, if you're going to be lazy, then you got to commit to it. All right. Here we go. Uh, Duluth Bulldogs Hockey Town USA on Twitter. And this is a curious question because I'm curious what goaltenders actually think of this. He's asking, are you looking forward to stealing some games for the Bulldogs? Do goalies ever think like I hear uh, I hear forwards and defensemen say like, man, our goalie really stole a game for us tonight. Do goalies ever think in their head like I'm going to steal a game tonight? Well, I didn't have that feeling for a while because I don't feel like I stole any game this year yet, you know, because we didn't obviously have many wins, you know, like maybe the first game of the year, you know, like that was the, probably the biggest win I had so far. But yeah, like that's that's the best feeling, you know, and when the other team is really playing great, I'm not saying that your team is not playing good, but like like those games at the World Juniors, you know, like playing against better teams who are expected to win, and then you have a great game and you win. So that's always the best feeling and not winning, you know, like 6 nothing or something like that, you know, like always those tight games, you know, like games where every save matters, like that's those are the biggest games and the games I'm looking forward to. And I hope in a second half I can get better for my team and, and help them win those games. I'm going to jump in on the listener questions here, Matt, to be more of a hypocrite I okay. guess, than, I, than I already cool. am being. Sounds good. But it, you win a game like five to four and you don't play very well. Or you lose a game like two to one and you play phenomenally. Like, I mean, I think a lot of us media looked at the Minnesota series and thought you played fairly well throughout that series, but the results weren't what you wanted as a team. How do you measure yourself? Because obviously winning is the most important thing, and, and yeah. no players on the, no players on the team going to say I would rather lose two to one than win five to four. But if you play well, how do you measure that if the result isn't there um, as a goaltender? Yeah, I feel like especially right now, like obviously results are not great, you know, like team results and also my results. But I feel like big improvements in my game. And I just compare like goal is the hard position, you know, and like so many people doesn't understand it and they just look at the stats. But for me, like, I guess the big example from this year is the no dog weekend when I got pulled back to back nights. And then the weekend after in Miami when I got shot and I was goalie of the week. I don't think I play better in Miami than against no duck. 
And in Miami, I got scored twice in two games. Against Nodak, I got scored seven times in two periods. So, like, obviously, result crazy different. If someone look at Miami weekend, they would say, like, goalie was unbelievable. If they look at the Nodak weekend, they would say that, you know, the Luf play with empty net. But I felt like I play, you know, just as well the both weekends, you know. The, f- the first weekend, obviously, we, we play better team, you know, and, uh, you know, like there was some higher goals and stuff like that. And the next weekend, team just played great, you know, in front of me. So I feel like it's always, obviously, you play to win a game, but you have to look at how you perform, you know. So it's always like you always want to win a game, but you have to look like if you are getting better, if you are doing the right stuff. And I would say the Western, you know, the last weekend we played, I felt like those are my best games. Not the results, but the way how I played. And even watching it with goalie coach or the Blackhawks goalie scouts that were actually at those games. And here you like how I play and like the stuff what I'm trying to change is getting better. So that's why I'm like, I didn't have good results so far, you know, like this season, but I hope and I know the second how it will be a lot better because I can feel those improvements I'm doing. So. Like I said, that was probably the best example where I can say that no Doug weekend in Miami, that I was playing both weekends pretty much the same and the result is completely different. So <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about this with, with Ev Gascon recently. She had a I was keeping track of like the most saves she's had to make in, in a game and like some of her best games where she's made like, you know, saves in the forties. She's lost, I think, all those games where she's had to make saves in the forties and she was phenomenal. And then the other night she had like a, a 19 save shutout yeah. and it's like, everyone's like, Hey, let's give the goalie, you know, yeah. a, a star. They got, they got a shutout, but she only saw 19 saves. It's just, yeah. it's a weird position you play where I don't think the numbers always tell the, uh, the full story. Cause you can yeah. post a shutout and not do a whole lot. Yeah. Um, or you can, it's gotta be tough. Sometimes you can go make 50 saves and still lose the game. Yeah, and sometimes like those games, you know, like where you have 20 shots, like obviously in Miami, I think like the first night I have like 20 saves or something, I had shot out. Then the Western on Friday, I had 20 shots and five goals. But that was obviously those 20 shots were a lot harder than in Miami and I made some good saves, you know, like I probably had better saves than in Miami and they still scored five goals. We just, some of those I would on the bag, but like I said, when I look at a whole game and how I played and like the stuff what I'm trying to change with goalie coach and and Black House goalie scout like those things are getting better and they are for sure the best the last weekend so I know I'm getting better and I know the second half of the year I will be a lot better for my team and hopefully stall those games I, I did want to ask about this sequence and we can get back to the, to the listener questions after this but you get pulled twice against North Dakota next weekend first collegiate shutout goaltender of the week in the conference how much did it mean that, and we asked Scott about this, he didn't want to talk about it himself and we haven't talked to you about it since then, but how much did it mean that he went right back to you on that Friday in Miami as a goaltender? Because as a freshman dealing with what you went through in North Dakota, getting the chance to bounce back the way you did against Miami, how big a a two week sequence was that for you just mentally to know that you can do it again, you know, after a tough weekend against North Dakota? Yeah. Like I said, I, like, obviously, I was frustrated with the result against Nodak, but I know I didn't play bad. You know, like, for example, what you mentioned that you thought I played good against the the golfers. Like, I thought it was more goals against golfers I could have stopped than the Nodak weekend. Those are just, like, kind of, you know, like, lucky bounces. And obviously, I could have been buried that game, but I wasn't, like, so sad about how I played. You know, it just, just wasn't the game, and I got pulled, you know. And even after being pulled uh, Friday, you know, like, coach went to me back right away Saturday, and then... You know, they have eight shots and scored two goals and I got pulled again after five minutes. So obviously it wasn't easy, but I know that coach Sandlin trusts me and I really appreciate it. And, you know, it is good when you feel that trust and that's another thing. Like coach can trust, but you have to trust yourself, you know, and obviously it's always somewhere back in your head. Like, oh, you got pulled back to back nights, you know, and there are huge expectations from you and you're begging on that Friday, you know, and like you have to perform. And even when you don't have many shots, like any shot can change the game, you know, like it was, I think one, nothing or two, nothing after first. So it wasn't that it was, you know, five, nothing game. So you always have to just focus for the present. And like I said, I, I know I didn't have any bad game this year, but there wasn't any game that I would be like unbelievable, you know? So I was always on that, on the line. And like I said, sometimes I have bad results, sometimes not as well, but 
I thought every game, there wasn't any great game and there wasn't any bad game. You know, I was always good enough, but not great, you know, so I know I have to be better than that. Question from Dan Jacobson on Blue Sky. How many different ways have people mispronounced y- your last name since coming here to uh, to America? I don't even know. I actually talked to some of my teammates. I don't remember who it was, but just like, well, in Slovakia, like no one would say my name differently, you know, like right. kind of yeah. say everything as you write it. And here, like just going to pharmacy or somewhere, like even not just me with different name, but every every person have to spell their name, you know? <laughs> you never have to do that in Slovakia, just no. So I heard like Gajan or I think like some announcer, I don't know if it was Jojo or nor call me like Gajan or something like that. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't hear many. So. Do you have a nickname on the team? Oh, uh, my nickname is Gajo. Or last year in Green Bay, they called me Gax. Okay. Gajo is from Slovakia, so that's how everyone calls me in Slovakia. So mm-hmm. that's how most of the guys call me here. Yeah, I like that one better than than Gox. Yeah, uh-huh. that's that's what I came up with last year in Green Bay, so I <laughs> never heard it before. So, all right, some quick hits to close this out. Uh, one thing you've wanted to do in America that you haven't done yet? I don't know. No, no. Uh, yeah, well, you've been to Lambeau Field. I mean, that's the 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 pinnacle. Yeah, I would one that that would be yeah. the pinnacle of come to the United States, go to Lambeau Field, maybe watch go Packer to game. like. I don't know, like some. I've been to a few NHL games, but like maybe some big game, like like playoff like a, game like a Stanley or like Cup Stanley playoff Cup game. final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like yeah. I want to see Andre Vasilevsky. So I would say that probably. You might have to leave Tampa Minnesota play. to do that one. But yeah. <laughs> Sadly, you might have to leave Minnesota to see <laughs> yeah. a, a Stanley Cup playoff game. Um, Hopefully not. <laughs> if you could take your teammates to one place in Slovakia, where would you take them? Uh, probably High Tatras mountains right by my by my home. So. Like I said, it's probably the nicest place to see in Slovakia. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, last one. I, I love asking the goaltenders this. Uh, you face them in practice. Who are the first three shooters you are picking for the Bulldogs if a game goes to a shootout? Oh, that's a hard question. Scott uh, said before that sometimes in the games he asks the goalies. So you have to, that's be, pre- where this question, you have to be prepared for oh, this. Yeah, really? That's yeah. where this question okay, came I from. Did, He's I asked the goalies that. before who he, who he should go to. I would pick actually, I think Gali, Owen Gallatin. I I like his move, what he does in practice. I think it's okay. hard to stop. So probably him, then obviously Domer. Like, you know, like he can always score. And then uh I don't know. I think I'll just go with, with Jason, you know, like obviously have you know good moves. So probably mm-hmm. those three guys. All right. We will wrap it up there. Adam, thank you so much for coming on the podcast this week. Yeah, thanks for having me. You can find the Bulldog Insider Podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Like us, subscribe, and rate us. For more Bulldogs hockey coverage, visit DuluthNewsTribune.com slash Bulldog Insider. Subscribe to gain access to all of our coverage all season long. Uh, Zach, what's the TV schedule look like coming up here? Anything? Nope. We're done for the first half. So you guys have fun in Arizona, and uh, then we'll see you in January. Back really days. looking forward to those high 70s. I don't uh, want to talk about it. <laughs> after the, the many cold days out at 6 a.m. walking the dog lately. I'll be watching Friday and Saturday in front of the fire. So it'll be warm here too. There you go. Yeah. Um, all right. Thanks everyone for listening. We'll catch you next week. <laughs>